then gamma is an upper bound. Or another way of saying it is the supremum is what? Less than or equal to gamma. With me? OK, again, self-evident, but uh, a worthwhile property to record. What does this mean? This means, in effect, what this means is if you have an equation that says, al uh, an inequality that says alpha is always bounded by some gamma for all alpha, then you can put soup without changing the inequality. Okay. Yes, Jenny. Um, it does. It. Uh, well, let me be. Let me be very. Uh, let me be very careful about this. Um, okay. No. No. Okay. Well, let me. Let me write down the second thing. Let me address your question here. So suppose you have the same statement for all alpha a and out a, uh, a and big A. A is just less than gamma. What can I conclude about the supremum? Here's one case where you might be you might be a little careful. What can I conclude about the supremum? Okay, yeah. So you might be tempted because of the strict less than here to think that this is just a strict less than, but it's not. There is an equals here, less than or equal to. The, the most you could conclude is that the supremum supremum is less than or equal to gamma, and the reason is you could just think about this. Um, is when you take the supremum, remember, it it could it actually could achieve the bound, even if everything's less than gamma, right? So, for instance, look at all the numbers less uh, all the negative numbers. Certainly, all the negative numbers are strictly less than zero, but the supremum of the negative numbers is zero. Okay. Okay. Uh, so Jenny's question was. Um, can you make one of these, uh, can you make this a le an if and only if? Um, so if the supremum is less than or equal to gamma, is it true that in fact everything is less than or equal to gamma? Yes, that's just by, uh, just by, uh, uh, by definition. This is the least upper bound. This is some other upper bound, so this is going to be an upper bound. But that, that's, that's, so um, follows from, defin uh, from the definition, if you like. Okay. Um, okay. Good. Let's write down another property here. Um, what if you know the following? If gamma is less than the supremum of A, well, here's another thing we've implicitly used already, but worth noting. If you have a number that's strictly smaller than the supremum, then what does this imply? There exists a little a in big A such that what's true? Little a is bigger than gamma and what? less than or equal to the supremum of A. So if there's a number smaller than, than gamma, uh, than the supremum of A, there must be something in the set that's strictly bigger than gamma. It might be equal to the supremum. So that's why I'm going to put that picture there. OK? OK. Um, again, an, a, a useful property. So if I wanted to summarize how you might show um, how you might show that something is a supremum, uh, sorry, if, if you might show an upper bound is the least upper bound, there are two strategies, right? First you show it's an upper bound, and then you either show that anything that is smaller isn't an upper bound. Or you show that if any something is an upper bound, all the other upper bounds are bigger than it. Right? There are two two ways of showing that something's a suprema. Let me give another property here. 
What if A is a subset of B? What can I say about the supremum of A and the supremum of B? OK, good. The supremum of A is less than or equal to the supremum of B. Really? Why? Feels right, but how would I show it carefully? So this one might require a little more justification. Well, if A is a subset of B, then everything, so how am I going to show the supremum is less than blah? How am I going to show the supremum is less than blah? I'll show that blah is an upper bound for A. OK, or if I like, I'll show that blah is bigger than everything in A. Is blah, which is soup B here, is soup B bigger than everything in A? Yes, because everything in A is in B, and then therefore less than soup B. So why, for all A in little a, um, uh, a is in B, so A is less than or equal to soup B. And then by property, uh, I don't know, which one is it, B? Soup uh, A is less than or equal to soup B. Okay? So maybe you get a sense of how you're sort of implicitly using these properties here. Okay. And I'm going to finish with uh, a property that might be helpful for one of the homework problems. Mm, I think it's, I think it's uh, the next homework, maybe not this one, but property uh, F. What if you want to show soup A equals soup B? The supremum of two sets are exactly the same. How would you do that? What would be a strategy? Yes? OK, you could show that the soup of A is less than or equal to soup B, and soup B is less than or equal to soup A. What would that involve? <laughs> OK, <laughs> using some of these properties, yes, very true. Let me suggest the following. Here's one way to, to think about it. Now, see. If you're lucky, the two sets might be the same, right? Then, then, then it's easy to see why this is true, to prove what you just said, right? But that's not always, that's not necessarily going to be the case. So here's one strategy. Let's show that for every little a in big A, there exists a little b in big B such that little a is less than or equal to little b. Would you agree that this would be uh, enough to show that soup a is less than soup b? Why? Well, it's kind of like this argument, except uh, you don't have the fact that little a is in B, but if you can show little a is less than little b, then little b is less than soup b. And therefore, soup b is a bound for all things in A, uh, because there's an element for each of them that works, and therefore bigger than soup a. And then, then you then similarly use a similar uh, method for greater than or equal to. OK? This might be helpful to you in solving uh, one of the homework um, problems. OK, uh, excellent. So we've talked about the least upper bound property. Uh, and it's something that uh, is, distinguishes the reals. Uh, next time, we're going to start talking about com the complex number field. OK, that's the plan.